Hi guys, welcome back to UK Fly Fisher. Today I have another top six video for you, and that's gonna be my top six still water flies. Now I did a video similar to this two years ago with my top 10 flies. It was one of your favorite videos. It's got lots of views and lots of comments, uh, and a lot of people have asked me to do an updated version. So what I've got today is my top six and some honorable mentions, and I'll bring this out as a pack. So if you're interested in the flies in the video today, you can find it on our website at ukflyfisher.com. So before we get into the top six, let's have a quick look at some of my honorable mentions. So first up in my honorable mentions is a fly that does really well for me between spring and summer. And that is my olive and gold shimmer cruncher. It's a great fly for imitating a range of natural patterns, especially small olive nymphs. It does very well for me when a fishing gets tricky. I'll often fish this as a single fly on a very long leader and just really, really slowly figure it back, sometimes even static. The fish seem to love this, it's natural looking, it's not scary, and when fishing gets hard and the sun's high in the sky and the temperatures increase, this is one of my go-to patterns. I'll usually fish this on a floating line with a 12 to 18 foot leader. Occasionally, if the fish have gone a bit deeper, I'll switch over to the sink tip. Another great way to use this fly is on a point fly when straight line nymphing, and I'll explain what that is in another video. The second fly on our honourable mention list is the Scruffy Pulsefire Cat. Each week we're getting more and more reports of people catching on this fly and it's slowly becoming one of my go-to patterns. The colour combination and that translucent effect you get with the Pulsefire range is absolutely deadly. I'd fish this fly on a sink tip line. I use my 6 foot fast sink tip with a 12 to 18 foot leader depending on how shy the fish are. The retrieve I'll use is usually a medium figure 8 but I'll often add a pause into the retrieve and then suddenly speed up. It's usually after this pause that you'll get a take. It's called the induced take, and it's really just like a cat and a mouse situation. When a mouse sits still, the cat will sit still behind it. As soon as that mouse makes a bolt for it, the cat pounces. And it's exactly the same with the fish. And the scruffy pulse fly cat seems to trigger this reaction more often than not. So the third fly we're going to give an honourable mention is the wet mayfly. Now this is a great pattern in May and June for reasons that you can guess but it also comes in really handy in September, October and November when the fish are hard on the fry. Now I don't know what it is about this fly, maybe the shape, maybe the silver body, but it seems to represent small fry really, really well. When the fish are hard on the fry, I'll often cast into them with this fly and it doesn't take long before you get a hookup. Now you want to make your retrieve very sporadic. You don't want to make it smooth and natural like a fully healthy fish. You want it to imitate one of the injured fry that they want to come and mop up. I'll often do this by a few twitches, pausing, and then a, a slow figure eight by a fast twitch, and then back to a slow twitch. The more sporadic you can make it, the better. You'll often find that new anglers catch a lot of fish, and that's because they're not really thinking about their retrieve, and they're just making it up as they go along. It's this retrieve that you want to incorporate when fishing the mayfly, and you'll get some cracking fish using this method. So give it a try. So the last fly to get an honorable mention, it needs no introduction, it's the black mamba absolutely deadly fly we all use it if it's a hard day chuck this on you're bound to get a fish it's our go-to fly when things get hard now the only reason it hasn't made it into the top six will become clear later but this fly is one you want to have in your box i'll fish this usually on a sink tip or intermediate line but i'm happy to fish it on any line the retrieve i'd use is usually a medium figure eight and every now and again speed up i'll always incorporate a pause you know that by now after a pause, you can get some savage takes, so it's always worth including the pause on the way back. I usually fish this as a single fly. You don't need to team it up with anything. It's deadly on its own. In fact, I'd go as far to say as it's more deadly as a single fly. When you start adding droppers and other flies, it doesn't work as well. This fly on its own will catch you fish. You don't need to make it any more complicated than that. For the leader, I'll use a 10 to 18 foot leader, depending on the situation, but more often than not, they don't really mind the leader being a bit shorter in this case because they're chasing it, they're attacking it out of aggression. They do not like this fly, they want to kill it. You're not getting a take here because they're hungry. You're appealing to the trout's aggressive side. And that's why this fly often takes tigers, browns and spartics with a higher percentage than any other fly on the list. So that's all the flies that will get an honorable mention. Let's move on to our top six list. So in at number six on my list is a red holographic Jowback. Now I found, more often than not, that the red would end up outfishing the other colours in the range. There are so many variations and different styles of jowbacks out there, but one of the most consistent is the red holographic. 
When things get hard, when it's a hot day, or when the fish are hard on the naturals, I'll often put this at some point on my setup. So when it comes to the red holographic gel back, there's three main ways I like to fish this fly. Firstly, it's a single fly. I'll fish this on a 16 foot leader on a floating line. That may seem like a long leader, but when I'm fishing it as a single fly, it's because the fish are hard on the naturals, they're usually spooky, and I wanna keep that line as far away from the fish as I can. So increasing the leader makes this fly look more natural and fish more natural. And because of that, you often get more fish. The second method is fishing it straight line nymphing. Now usually this will become my middle dropper on a size 12 hook. It's a great fly, it looks really natural, and with a cruncher on the point, and maybe a buzzer or another gel back on the top dropper, you represent a wide range of nymphs, and it usually proves deadly with a very slow retrieve. Often I'll cast this across the wind and simply slow figure eight just to keep in touch with the flies. I'll let the wind move them naturally, and you'll often get savage takes like this because the fish hook themselves and they just go ballistic. It's a great fly, really represents natural food, and it's an incredibly effective pattern for when the fishing gets tough. The third method is the washing line. Now, if you haven't fished a washing line before, an easy way to start is with a 12 foot leader and space them flies four foot apart. Then when you get more comfortable, you can increase the gap between the flies to five or six foot between each fly, and then your total length will be 15 or 18 foot. I'll often go for the 18 foot when things are a bit more tricky, and then if we're fishing a water that isn't fished as heavily or the fish are more on the feed, then I'll go all the way down to that 12 foot leader with the fly space four foot apart. The lines I'd use for this method are either a sink tip or an intermediate line. That booby helps keep your flies in the killing zone for that much longer. And that's why fishing the washing line can be incredibly effective. I'll usually team this gel back up with a smaller one on the point fly in a size 14, or I'll put a buzzer on that top dropper. These two flies really do look natural and with the attractor fly pulling the fish in they'll often take the middle dropper which in my case is often the red holographic gel back. In the number five spot is our salmon egg. Now this is a great fly for stalking trout. I've done a lot of stalking recently, refining my skills, I really enjoy the method and it's something I excel at. I've fished this on my stalking rod which means I'm using a short leader of six to eight foot. You don't want your leader to be longer than your rod because when you're stalking fish, you never want the fluorocarbon to come inside that top ring. When I'm fishing this fly, all I'm doing is looking for cruising fish and flicking it in front of them, sort of three or four foot in front, and gauging their reaction as it sinks to their level. The reason we use fluorocarbon is because it allows your fly to fall naturally and cuts through the surface film. If they don't seem interested on the descent of the fly, I'll bob it up and down, just twitching the rod up, down, up, down. This moves your fly in an up and down motion. And it's that motion that often gets a really aggressive reaction from the trout. I found this out while stalking, that fish tend to like the up and down movement more than the pulling it from left to right motion. I don't know why, but it works really, really well. And once you've tried it, you'll understand just how effective it can be. Now I'll often go out with a few variations of the egg fly in all different sorts of colors, but the one that came out on top time and time again was a salmon egg. There's one more way you can fish this fly. It's deadly. It's not something I do very often, if at all, but my friends Lloyd Williamson and Chris Flay tend to fish this quite regularly and have great success with it. And that is fishing this under a bung. There's something about this fly when it's just sat there static under a bung that gets a reaction from the trout. I've seen these two anglers catching fish where no one else is catching using this very method. And I'll let them explain it to you at a further date when we do a video on bung fishing. In the number four spot, and one of my favorite flies from last year, is the black and pearl shimmer cruncher. This is a great natural fly that represents a wide variety of nymphs without actually representing anything specifically. It's a great pattern, it's got plenty of movement, and it's just got that little bit of flashing that really, really pulls it apart from the naturals. Some of my other shimmer crunchers have the bright flash and they work great and on days they can outfish anything on the pond. But the one that's been most consistent for me is the black and pearl. It's subtle, it's very natural looking and it seems to trick some of the wiser fish. I caught some monsters on this fish last year. Again, for the setup, it's pretty similar to the gel back. When I'm fishing it as a single fly, I'll use a long leader, a floating line, and a very, very slow retrieve. Casting across the wind, letting the wind move it, and just keeping in touch with that fly. 
You don't want to go too light on your fluorocarbon. The fishing to smash this fly. I'd recommend six to eight pound. I've seen some people trying to fish this on four and five pound tippets and getting snapped off because the takes are just savage. The fish don't know they're hooked. They take it as a natural. Next minute they're hooked and they just go ballistic. It's a great fly to have in your box. The other way I'd fish this is when I'm straight line nymphing, I'd use this as a point fly. Nine times out of 10, if I'm straight line nymphing, my point fly is a cruncher. They're so versatile and they're such a great pattern that I love having them on the point. So the way I'll set this up is I'll have 16 foot of fluorocarbon leader. I'll have six foot to my top dropper, five foot to my middle dropper, and then five foot to the point fly, which will be one of the crunchers. More often than not, it's ending up being a polar cruncher. And then on my middle dropper, I'll have a natural nymph, something like a gel back. The red holographic would be perfect. And then my top dropper will be another size smaller. I tend to go for 10, 12, and 14, or 12, 14, 16 in sizes, going from large to small. This just helps with turnover and it also gives them a variation on size depending on what they want on the day. You'll soon find out by what fly they're taking. Fishing the straight line nymphing method often shows you what depth they're feeding. And then you can switch over to the washing line to keep your flies in that killer area for that much longer. I'll go into more detail on how to fish both the washing line and straight line nymphing methods in future videos. So make sure you subscribe to keep an eye on all the new content we bring out. So before we get into the top three, now's a quick time to remind you that I'll be selling these packs on our website at ukflyfisher.com. I'm gonna give you two options, the 10 fly options with all the honorable mentions in, and also the top six fly option. By buying these packs, you're helping support our channel and making sure we can bring you more content. In the number three is our big fish fly. If we're going after a big fish, this is the first fly we'll put on because the amount of emails, messages, phone calls I get about this fly catching PB fish or double figure fish from fisheries is unbelievable. It's the fly I invented and ever since I invented it, everyone seems to want it. It catches so many fish. It's just one you have to have in your fly box. And that's the incredible cat. It's one of my go-to flies if I'm heading to a water where I want to catch a big fish. I don't know what it is about the edge bright material and the fluorescent fire orange thread, but it seems to get an aggressive reaction from the big trout. Let's face it, it's a mouthful of protein. It's probably imitating a small fry and the fish just can't seem to resist. The way I'd fish this is on a sink tip line with a 12 to a 16 foot leader. The retrieve I use is a medium figure eight. And once again, I'm gonna add that pause in. Now, the reason I keep mentioning the pause is not enough of you use this and it's a great way to get you catching more fish. That three second pause lets the fly fall down in a natural downwards motion before you start retrieving again, which lifts it up like the natural food does in an up and down plane, and it can get you more fish. Another reason is the reason we mentioned earlier, and that is the cat and the mouse situation. Once again, you're just trying to get a reaction from the trout and convince them to have a snap at your fly. Like I mentioned, this is my big fish go-to fly, so make sure to give it a go and let me know how you get on with the incredible cat. In the number two spot is one of my favorite flies. It's a fly that's very special to me and it catches me so many fish. If I'm struggling, this is one of my go-to patterns because it can almost guarantee that you're gonna catch. There's never a guarantee in fly fishing, but this is as close to a guarantee as you're gonna find. And that is the Rainbow Flush Damsel. I do a lot of damsel fishing and I have a lot of variations of damsels just because slight variations can often mean the difference between catching 10 and catching two fish. But the one that comes out consistently is the rainbow flash damsel. If I'm struggling or finding something difficult on a day, or I just want to catch a large number of fish, one of my first flies that I'll put on is the rainbow flash damsel. I'm confident I'm fishing this from anything from a floating line to a dive ring. For the floating and sink tip lines, I'll use a 12 foot leader and I'll vary that retrieve. Usually it'll be between a slow and a medium figure eight and the odd pause and the odd twitch thrown in just to mix it up a bit. If I go down deeper on an intermediate or a sinking line, I tend to lengthen the lead a little bit and I'll speed up that retrieve. Often I'll be stripping it in or a really fast figure eight. I'll still pause, but once again after that pause, I'll be going straight back to a fast strip or a fast figure eight retrieve. It gets great reactions from the trout, that mobile olive marabou combined with the flashaboo and the rainbow myla in the body just seem to work and get great reactions from trout. The amount of letters we get sent in 
and emails and f phone calls to explain that this fish has caught someone their limit and they've been having a great time on it is incredible. It simply catches fish on any still water we've been to. I keep getting a lot of questions about doing a fly tying video for this, so I think that's what I'm gonna do next. It's a rainbow flash damsel, it's a very special fly to me, and it's definitely, definitely worth having in your fly box. So, number one, what has knocked the black mamba off that top spot? What is this new deadly fly? Well, technically, nothing's knocked it off the spot, and there's no new fly. All we've done is we've modified the black mamba by adding a four millimeter tungsten bead to the front. That's made it very heavy and made it great for stalking. Adding that weight to the front of the fly means we can fish this on an up and down motion. It's made it great for stalking and it gets an incredibly aggressive reaction from the trout. More so than anything, this fly catches brown trout, tiger trout and spartics, which are fish I go out and target specifically. I like these fish, they're really cool and I really enjoy catching them. So I try and avoid rainbows and in my quest to search out these exotic species, this fly has been created to do that. Now in a two day period at Manningford and Garnfrew trout fishery, I managed to catch 72 fish with this fly. It's incredibly effective. The fish do not like it, they do not want it in their water and they'll attack it with great aggression. Most of the time I've been stalking in the margins, but it's just as deadly casting out. I'm gonna do a video on this fly on its own later in the year. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icons so you don't miss out on exactly how I fish it and a few little tips and tricks I'll give you along the way to get the best results from the fly. Now when I'm stalking with it, again I'm using it on a short rod, so I'll be using a six to eight foot fluorocarbon leader. And I advise going quite strong on your tippet material here. Six pound is the absolute minimum I'll go, but if I'm stalking, I'll tend to be using an eight pound just because some of the takes after they've uh, attacked this fly are just incredible. The fish just go on huge runs. You'll be down to your back end if you catch the right fish and it's just incredibly exciting stuff. And you don't want to snap off on a fish of a lifetime just because you've gone too light on a leader. By fishing this in up and down motion, that means we, we have a little bit of leniency with how heavy we can go on the fluorocarbon because the fish hasn't got any line in its vision. Usually I won't even have any line on the water. The fluorocarbon's coming from the top of the fly all they're seeing is this fly bobbing up and down inside of them. So you can, you can really afford to go a bit heavier on your fluorocarbon when stalking with this fly. Last year, it caught 90% of my fish easily. I was using it everywhere, really got into stalking. Also happy to cast this out into the middle. Tim Allen came with me to Garn Fruit and caught a new PB on this fly. When people were struggling, everyone was using the naturals. We decided to go against the grain and chuck this on and he had a great day. I think he finished top rod on the day with 16 fish or something and a new PB. So he had a great day using this fly and that was casting out into the middle. So when we're casting this fly out, I tend to use my sink tip line and I'll use a 12 foot leader. This is gonna sink very fast. So the retrieve I use is either twitchy to get the up and down motion or I'll figure it really fast back. Every now and again, I'll pause. Again, this is gonna drop straight down because it's tungsten and usually you can get a take on a drop with this fly. I don't know if it's because it falls the same rate as the pellet, but I do think it's more to do with just the aggressive nature of the trout and how much they hate this fly rather than a feed in motion. I will try and get some underwater footage of you just to show you their reaction to this fly, but they were hitting it five, six, seven times. I was even pricking them sometimes, so they'd usually switch off after being pricked and they were still hitting it. It was unbelievable. I've got some of the footage. I'm in the middle of making a video all to do with the Black Mamba Stalker and how to fish it. Well, that's my top six flies, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video as much as I enjoy sharing my information with you. I hope it helps you catch some more fish. If you tie your own flies, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing demonstrations in the future on how each of these are tied. And if you don't tie and you wanna buy them, there'll be links to the packs in the description below. All that's left to do is thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.